G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Aussie Dividend Machine. Here's another weekly portfolio update. There's a lot to talk about this episode. Obviously we've had a big week here in Melbourne, Australia, um, heading into stage four COVID-19 restrictions. Heading into this second lockdown is obviously going to have a pretty big impact on the market, not just in the state of Victoria, but also broadly across Australia. First up, we'll go over my investment portfolio and have a look at my recent purchases. Second up, I wanted to have a look at the latest news and check out the impact on the market. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so jumping straight into it, um, you can see here's my latest portfolio numbers. Um, net worth is up to uh, quite close to 10,000, almost about to break that mark. Um, latest purchase along the line you can see here is um, IHVV, which is the iShares um, S&P 500 tracker. Um, made this purchase uh, to get a bit of exposure to the American market. It is an ETF. Um, you can check out my uh, last video, which went over ETFs and all the ins and outs. I'll put a link up to that um, on the video just now for you guys, if you want to learn a, bit, a little bit more about that. Um, did all the necessary checks on that one, made sure to check its NAV. If you don't know what that is, make sure you do check out that video on ETFs. It's an important one to know before you make an ETF purchase. Um, I'll just give you guys a rundown of the purchase. So here's the iShares S&P 500 ETF page. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview of exactly what the fund covers. So a couple of key facts here, um, but the part I really wanted to show you is the holdings. So you can see this is their holdings uh, listed by um, the weighting. So big names here, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. As I've said, we don't have anything like that in Australia. These really high performing technology companies wanted to get some exposure to that. And also this ETF pays a quarterly dividend, um, which is listed just there. So um, that's a great feature. Um, really like that cash flow coming into the portfolio. So um, that's the recent purchase I made. Just back to the portfolio, you can see there. I'll turn on the dividends key. Um, I don't think anything's been um, happening. There's that NIB dividend, but um, as I said, missed out on that one. So as we go on into the next few weeks and months, you'll see those dividends start to appear and the impact they have on the portfolio. So just jumping straight into it now, um, first article I wanted to talk to was this one on the Sydney Morning Herald. I'll link all these articles in the comments below if you're interested in reading the full story. Um, yeah, first up, this one talks about uh, technology stocks versus your typical value stocks, which are more your brick and mortar style stores that sell things rather than have an online presence. Um, quite a high price and there, and the stock market value of these companies is just going through the roof. It's almost unprecedented. Um, however, people are drawing comparisons to the um, 2000.com bubble um, and how prices similarly went really, really high, but then imploded um, and we had that dot-com bubble crash. They're comparing both, um, but really mentioning that at this time, it's so hard to put um, a limit on growth of companies like Amazon or Apple when really their growth is dependent on access to the internet. Um, no one really knows when they'll stop growing and their capacity to grow is so high. So good read there, just to check um, really a comparison between value stocks and these new technology growth stocks and some of the risks that might exist um, investing too heavily into tech stocks. Move on to the, the next article now. Um, this one talks about mortgage lemmings hurtling off a fiscal cliff. Um, pretty funny title to this one. It talks about all the risks coming up for, um, I guess, mortgage holders and, and therefore lenders in the Australian market um, as we come out of this COVID crisis. Uh, talks on all of the current fiscal and government policies in place, which are really keeping um, people with mortgages alive at the moment. Uh, there's a variety of uh, facilities in Australia that are helping people get through life, I guess. Um, all the banks are offering a mortgage holiday. 
um, meaning you can defer your mortgage payments. This obviously does cost you in the long run um, because the interest is charged back at a later date. Um, but it does mention that we've actually got, I think it's 50% of people, something like that, um, who are actually reliant. Yeah, there you go. 55% of Australia's 6 million mortgages um, are actually using government support, which is the job keeper and job seeker payments here in Australia to help pay their mortgage. So there's three things that are going to happen um, coming up near the end of the year. I think the government payments stop in December and March, respectively, and then bank holidays are also going to end near the end of the year. Some may choose to extend, but um, it's really hurting the bank's back pocket and hurting their profit margins. So the longer this goes on, the worse it is going to be for them. The article really says when the government support start, stops and when the mortgage holidays stop, there's going to be there's going to be mortgage defaults. Um, how widespread it is is something hard to predict, but at the moment, looking at the numbers, there's going to be some absolute chaos um, early next year, potentially, um, with mortgage repayments. Who does this affect? Well, financial stocks, especially the big four banks in Australia. Um, a lot of really popular search terms on Google are around, um, is Commonwealth Bank a good buy? Is ANZ a good buy? Well, I'd be really cautious buying bank stocks um, until we see how this unfolds um, in early 2021. I wouldn't be putting a lot of money into banks at the moment, that's for sure. I'd love to see how this plays out first uh, before making any big investments. I reckon you're gonna see some major uh, profit losses and then potentially you could see crashing property prices, which is no good for, for the banks or, or the government, really. Um, so that's one to watch out for coming up in 2021. Next article I wanna look at relates to aged care. Um, we've had a pretty bad COVID uh, outbreak in Melbourne and um, really it's exploded in aged care centres. So some of the big listed aged cares such as Estia or Japara, Estia is mentioned here, have had massive uh, falls in their, in their stock prices. Estia has fallen 7% on Monday. Um, it's, it's been issued notices by the government to um, have assistance and all that sort of thing to help try and drive the virus out of these aged care centres. People are dying, um, the infection rates are going through the roof and the government's publicly announced that they have no faith in aged care centres to do the right thing and put the controls in place to stop the spread of the virus. Um, so I think long term, um, aged care centres do in fact have good long term prospects prospects. We've got an aging population. Um, the model for um, aged care in Australia is pretty good. There's a massive upfront payment which um, is held by these aged care providers. They can use that money to fund uh, future aged care projects, for example, to expand the number of um, residencies or beds that they've got. So the model has been working pretty well and it's led to quite rapid expansions of some of these aged care centers um, but yeah as you can see highlighted in this article they're coming under pretty heavy scrutiny at the moment and i reckon there'll be a further investigation once this crisis sort of settles down a little bit however um, i think the drop in their share price is probably disproportionate to the actual value that these aged care homes are losing so uh, this is something I'll be looking closer at in the next episode, but I think some of these listed aged care stocks, the high performing ones, are definitely going to be looking um, at a buy potentially um, as we move into the next few weeks and some of these price drops crystallize and we can see a bit of stability. Um, I think they're definitely falling more than what they should. Um, there is a bit of panic, uh, panic selling obviously happening. So yeah, I think a strong analysis of these comp companies will reveal some, potentially, some bargains. So that's another space to watch. Um, moving on, looking at energy now. So you'll notice in one of my other videos, I'll put a link up to that, we compared um, a couple of uh, petroleum or gas companies. And uh, we also know that re recently, Warren Buffett bought, um, yeah, pretty much bought a whole company in the US that deals with gas and gas distribution. So in Australia, um, I've sort of 
reiterated that gas might be a good buy due to the low gas prices at the moment. This article here talks about um, Energy Australia, which is a big, um, I guess, retailer in Australia. They have um, infrastructure as well that they use to distribute gas, um, but also they're invested in other energy systems um, such as renewables. They're talking here about Energy Australia um, losing a bit of money in the last few quarters, but ultimately focusing on a transition to renewables. Um, and to do this, they're relying on gas. Um, obviously renewables and their output fluctuates because they're usually reliant on um, natural forces such as sunlight or wind power or water, all of which um, can fluctuate and are not um, as reliable as fossil fuels. So to bridge this gap, a lot of companies are using um, gas, which is seen to be a, a cleaner form of fuel than, than coal um, or perhaps nuclear, which we don't have in Australia, but gas has been sort of um, pinpointed as a renewable transition fuel. So in this article, they're talking about Energy Australia investing in new gas projects to help fuel their transition to renewables. Um, and then that sort of links into this ABC article as well, which is the, which goes over the federal government's um, technology investment roadmap. This roadmap um, is pretty much federal government endorsement of this move to um, back gas in the shift towards renewable, renewables. So um, essentially you've got the big companies all choosing to use gas as their bridge between current technology and renewables. The government's supporting it. They put out their, um, it's called, it's called an emissions technology roadmap. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description so you can read it yourself. It's a pretty interesting document. It outlines how the country um, is preparing to take on the next few years and ultimately try and transition towards a um, net zero emission economy. Um, so in interesting strategy uh, and you can take advantage of these government strategies by purchasing um, some of the shares, which are obviously trading at a discount at the moment in big gas producers, whether it's Beach Energy or Woodside, um, and, and there are others out there. Um, but they talk a lot about Australia is a Australia is a big um, major exporter of gas. We we export more than we consume, so we've got a huge amount in reserve. It would make sense to utilise some of that gas uh, to help drive our own transition to renewables. So that covers the topics I wanted to go over this week. I hope some of them were insightful and that you learned something. Um, as I said, I'll put a link to all the articles in the description below so you can read them in your own time. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining guys and I'll see you in the next episode.